I'm Caleb Harris with You Can Make This Too. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm gonna be talking about why you don't need a jointer, or more specifically, how you can do everything a jointer does with other tools and machines. First, I'm gonna be talking about how a jointer works, and then I'll get into different techniques. I have a time code here of all the different things I'm gonna be talking about, and in the description, you'll also see links and cutaways to everything. This video is gonna be a little bit different for me because I'm not going to demonstrate every technique and every substitute technique because this would turn into a feature length film. Instead, I'm going to rely on past videos I've done as well as videos from my friends and reference them for many things. So you can go watch those other videos to get more details of the techniques I'll talk about if you need them. I imagine if you're watching this video, it's because you're pretty new to woodworking, so you may not really understand how a jointer works or what it does. And once you understand that, then it's easier on your own to find ways to substitute the tasks you would perform on a jointer. Now, why would you think if you don't have a jointer and you don't know much about woodworking, oh, I can do that with a jointer? Well, I assume you're learning from somewhere and it's probably YouTube videos or books or stuff and they might refer to a jointer. When if you don't have one and they don't offer a substitute technique, you might be asking yourself, how do I do that without a jointer? And that's why you're here. So a joiner has an in-feed table and an out-feed table and a giant cutter head in the middle. And it's the first step in the milling process because we use this to get a flat face and a flat edge that are both 90 degrees to each other. And it does do other things, but that's the primary task that a jointer is made for. And the way it works is the in-feed table is set lower than the out-feed table. Then as your board passes across, the cutter head removes the difference and it comes out flat and because of the way it works you can remove crook and cup and all kinds of defects in wood so even if you're working with lumber that's already milled if you have a jointer you can come to it and then correct any issues in your lumber so you have flat straight boards if that's important for your project the order of operations we'd normally follow with a jointer would be milling one face flat you know the wide part is the face and then once you have that perfectly flat you put it against the fence and make sure your fence is 90 degrees to your table, and then you pass it across, and then you get one flat edge. And because the fence was 90 degrees to the table, which is your reference surface, you also now have one 90 degree corner. Because if you haven't learned yet, you will soon learn that if your lumber isn't flat, straight, and square, you're gonna have a lot of problems building things. And that's actually where we'll start with our substitute techniques is face jointing because it's one of the things the jointer does really well that's probably the hardest to substitute. Now if the jointer had a brother, it would be the planer. The planer works almost exactly the same way except the bed is totally flat and the cutter head is mounted above the bed. So the idea is you take a board that has one good face that's come off the jointer, you put the good face on the bed, and then the cutter head will make the other face flat and perfectly parallel to the good face that's referenced off the bed. And the reason we use the planer instead of the jointer to get that other face is on the jointer, there's no reference to make sure the board stays parallel. So it'd be really easy to get, you know, a wedge shaped board, but the planer doesn't do that. Now, because the planer is so similar to the jointer, we can use it as a substitute for face jointing with a little extra work. If the rough lumber you're working with is pretty flat and straight, you can get away with face jointing on this without really doing anything most likely. The problem comes is if your bow board has any bow in it because then when you pass it through the way the planer works is the cutter head only really references off of the area of the bed that's directly under it. So if you passed a bowed board through here, it would simply come out and it would still be bowed. You could have a very parallel and you know, clean board, but it wouldn't be flat. But when you flatten the first face on a joiner, you do truly flatten it. So there's a few ways we can get around that. If your board is only slightly out of straight and flat, what you can often do is take turns passing through the jointer, flipping the board, which each, each pass, and that normally works to give you a pretty good surface. But if you want the best results or you're working with lumber with a more serious defect, then you'll want to make a jointing sled for your planer. And the way it works is it basically stands in place of a flat face and then lets you shim the board so it doesn't move at all while it goes through the planer to create a flat face. Now, if you're thinking, hey, I'm watching this because I don't have these big machines, and you just showed me another machine. Well, I totally hear you. Here's another technique that works really well. And I actually did a video on how to make one of these jigs. Now the cool thing about the jig I made is I actually made it to work with both my circular saw and a router. So if you only have a circular saw, you can still do this, but you will need a sander in order to flatten it and smooth it out. But 
I really recommend investing and getting a router. You can normally find them on Craigslist for less than $100 and you can get the flattening bit I used for about $20 off Amazon and I'll leave a link to that below. And the nice thing about this jig is it substitutes both the jointer and the planer because you can do both faces on it. Once you get the first face flat, you can just flip your board over and then use the jig to flatten the opposite face. And so long as you're working on a surface that is flat, you're going to end up with a flat board. Now, everything a jointer does, or really any machine can be done with hand tools, how it was done before we got machines. So with the face jointing though, the ideal setup would be a scrub plane, a jointing plane, and a smoothing plane. But you can get the job done with just a jack plane which is why it's called a jack plane, sort of a jack of all trade. It doesn't really excel at any of the tasks a plane does, but you can accomplish most of the bench plane jobs with a jack plane. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate this, but I will leave a video to someone much better than me with hand tools on how to flatten a board with hand tools, and that link will be below. Now that we've covered edge jointing, the next process you'd perform on a jointer would be jointing an edge so that it's 90 degrees to the finished face of the board. And perfectly flat. Fortunately, there's quite a few other easy ways to do this. Edge jointing. Now, if you've been watching me for a while, this is a trick that you'll have seen me do many times before, especially before I got this jointer. This is basically how I edge jointed. Now, on a table saw, the blade cuts parallel to the fence. So if you have one good edge on your board, you can put your good edge against the fence and then the opposite edge is going to be ripped parallel so you don't have a wedge shaped board that's wider at one end, narrower at the other end. But let's pretend both edges of the board are kind of nasty like this one. Why can't you just run it? Well, you can, but the problem is if it's out enough, this will wobble against the fence as you go and you'll still end up with a wavy edge instead of a perfectly straight edge. Now, if you're careful and you keep flipping your board, you can probably eventually end up with a straight edge, but you're going to put a lot of wear on your blade and you're gonna lose a lot of stock. So a trick I enjoy is to take something you know is straight like this level and then secure it to your board. Sometimes I'll put tape on it. A, a few times I'll just hold them together and then you run whatever your straight edge is, your level and your board through the table saw together. And this works because whatever straight edge you have is only referenced off whatever, whatever the high points in the rough side are. And because they're moving through together, you're going to have a very straight cut. Then you can flip it over and you don't need to use the straight edge because you'll have one good edge to rip your board parallel. parallel. Another super effective technique for edge jointing boards is at a router table made for it. Now I don't have a router table so I can't show you this but my friend Tamar does and she actually did this in a video and here's some clips from that. This works so well because it functions almost exactly the same way as a jointer does once you shim out the outfeed side of the router table fence. It's just in a vertical orientation instead of a horizontal. And so another way you can edge joint is using a circular saw. Now if you use a circular saw, you're gonna to have to use some type of guide. I have this true track saw guide that I really like. You can make a door board, you can buy guides from other manufacturers, but it's really important to have something that's going to guide the cut to make sure it stays straight. You will need to be very safety conscious if you use a technique like this because your guide is probably going to be wider than your board. So you'll need to stack several boards or something to make, to make sure your guide is very stable on whatever it is you're cutting. Edge jointing, of course, is another task you can do with hand tools. And that's really what the jointer plane, this is a number seven, excels at. However, you can also do it with a jack plane. This is around the size of a number five. And the reason you'd want a longer plane is because if you have a shorter plane, then it's just going to ride those nooks and crannies of the board. But a, a jointer plane or even a jack plane, as you can see, has a much longer sole. So that longer sole is going to help you get a flatter edge as you go. Again, I'm not gonna get into the technique of how you do this, but I will leave a link to a video below that goes into greater detail. Even though a jointer is primarily used for face and edge jointing, it can do many other things. And one of the most common things people like to use it for other than those is tapering. I prefer to taper on other machines, but now for tapering, like beveling, I prefer to do this at the table saw. If you've seen my modern dining table and chairs video, then you actually watch me build this jig. But a tapering jig is really simple and there's lots of different ways to do it. And it just lets you clamp and hold the board in place. And then when you feed it, it cuts it at a taper. And 
You can buy these pre-made or adjustable. This is a dedicated one that I made to just cut one angle for those jobs. So just like edge jointing, if you want to do a taper with your circular saw, you want to want to make sure you have a guide of some kind. But then instead of setting the guide to get the straight cut you want, you just mark where you want your taper to be and set the guide to cut the taper there. Now, if you're tapering, you're probably going to want to much closer to finish type surface from your circular saw than it normally gives. So I recommend getting a high tooth count blade and going nice and slow, letting the blade do the work to get you that better finish. And of course you can also cut tapers with hand planes. This is how it was done before machines. Now I'm not, now I don't have a good hand tool workbench yet to really demonstrate this, but the idea is you just start with your plane and you take a few passes at the end, then back up, take some more passes, back up, take some more passes. But you wanna take the most passes where you wanna remove the most material to create your taper. And then finish by the end with full passes so you have a perfectly flat and straight surface. And like always, there'll be a link below to a video on that. For a variety of reasons, the fence on the jointer is adjustable forward and backwards, mostly so you can get really even wear on your blades. But like any well-made machine, they're not designed to be trusted to always be square or reference how they need to be. So a jointer's fence is almost always adjustable so you can make sure it's 90 degrees. Well, since it's adjustable, you can also set it to degrees other than 90. And the reason you'd wanna do that is to create a bevel on an edge. It's kind of like edge jointing, but instead of making your edge 90 degrees to the face, you can set it to whatever angle you want. This is something I don't do on the jointer because after you do it, you have to re-square your fence and that's not something I enjoy. But sometimes it might be appropriate to do that on a jointer and here are some other ways you can do that. Beveling. Now, if I have to bevel an edge to a degree that I don't have a router bit for, I'm probably gonna do it on the table saw because I can tilt this blade to any degree up to about 45 blade. And once my blade is set, I just run the board through and I have a beveled edge. It's too easy. Of course, you can also cut bevels along the edge of boards with a circular saw. Almost all circular saws I know of are fairly easy to adjust the base plate. And my true track guide actually has a reversible side that gives you more room for the blade to fit for when you're cutting that beveled angle. So if I need to do a 30, 45, or 60 degree bevel, I'm probably gonna do it at the router because those are easy to find bit sizes. The bits have a bearing on it, so you just set the depth on your router and then you cut it. Super quick, super easy. And of course, just like you can edge joint a board with a hand plane, you can also bevel an edge. Now, if the edge is already really straight, you can probably get away with it smoother, but I would still prefer at least a jack plane or a jointer plane to, to do it just because that's gonna help keep your edge flatter. And you do it pretty much the same way as you would edge joint, except you have your plane at an angle. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about that you can do on a jointer isn't a feature that all jointers have, but mine does, so I'm gonna cover it. And that's rabbiting. As you can see on the outfeed table, I have this little drop here. And the purpose of that drop is so you can cut rabbits. And I actually performed this technique in a previous video that I'll show now. Now rabbiting. There's kind of three ways that you can cut a rabbit on a table saw. This is a ripping blade, so it has a flat tooth grind. So when you look at the cut, it doesn't have that little V shape in it. It's totally flat. So one of the things you could do is just move your face over and lower the blade to the depth of the rabbit you want to cut, feed your material through, nudge your fence over, and then take another pass until you remove it. The other option is you set your fence to the side and the blade height to the size of the dado. You run it and then you flip your board on edge and you run it again and then you'll have cut out whatever size notch you need. The other option to cut out a rabbit is if you have a dado stack, you can do it a little faster setting up your dado stack. What you'll probably want to do though is also add a sacrificial fence that you raise your blade into because the rabbit is going to go all the way to the edge of the board and you don't want to risk running your expensive blades into your real fence or damaging your fence. Just like you can use the router for beveling, you can also use it for rabbits. I don't have one, but you can buy rabbiting bits and it's just a bearing within a wider blade. So the bearing right again, rides against the edge and you just get the appropriate size rabbiting bit, set the depth on the router, buzz through the edge and cut it. It's too easy. 
but you don't need a rabbiting bit in order to cut a rabbit with a router. You can do the same with a regular straight bit so long as you have an edge guide. Just clamp your edge guide down and then run your base along your edge guide to make sure you get a straight cut and you can do it with any straight bit and not have to worry about having a rabbiting bit with a bearing. And of course you can also cut rabbits with a hand plane. I actually don't have a hand plane set up to do this because the main difference between a rabbiting plane and a normal plane is most normal planes has some amount of sole, that's the bottom of the plane, beside the blades. But for a rabbiting plane, the main difference is the blade goes all the way to the side of the plane. So that way it can cut the full width. And, and I'll leave a link below to a video on how to rabbit with hand planes. Thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. If you liked it, please hit that like button. And if I missed a technique that you like to use to work around not having certain tools or machines in your shop, please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear how you guys adapt inside your shop with the equipment you have. Now, if you're interested in more of these, I'll have a playlist up of the videos as they come out. I'll be doing videos like this on the table saw, band saw, miter saw, etc. So make sure you hit subscribe if you don't want to miss those. And if you're new here, this is a bit of a break from my regular type of videos. I normally do projects and tips. So if you're interested in that kind of content as well, then make sure you hit subscribe so you can catch my more regular videos. And I'll have a link up to a video that YouTube thinks is great for you. So check that out. Thanks.